Now we have done four steps of the classification theorem of compact surfaces. And after the fourth step, we proved that uh, every surface has a plane model that looks like this. Uh, whenever a label in, in this plane model appears twice without the inverse, then we can um, make sure that these two appearances, they are next to each other. So if we have A and A, then they are going to, to sit next to each other, B and B next to each other. Between them, uh, there, there could be a mixture of other labels and their inverses. So step four does not apply to, to labels that have inverses. So if, say, we have some, some uh, label C that appears with its inverse, then this C and C inverse are not going to be next to each other. So that, that we don't know. All right. So uh, step five deals with the case when we have a label and it's inverse. So suppose that um, um, before step five, we have some label A and uh, it's inverse. So then they're not going to sit next to each other. So A and A inverse. So which means that somewhere in between, in, in between them, that there's going to be another label. That, let's say there may be B. Well, but then uh, the other copy of B can be either also B or it can be B inverse. Now, if the other copy of B is, is also B, then uh, because of step four, that they have to be next to each other. So it, it may be something like this. Or if that there is something that is with its inverse, then it could be like this. Well, let, let me write down all the possibilities, right? So if between A, all the labels that we have between two copies of A are um, those that appear without inverses, then it means that they have to appear in pairs. So then it's going to be something like this, B1, B1, and so on, BK, BK. Right. Well, now to show that this is impossible is actually a tutorial. So tutorial, some exercise that to show that this is impossible. All right. So this could happen, but actually it does not happen. Now, um, what else can we have? We also can have something like A, and then there's going to be some some other B, and then something else, and then there's going to be B inverse, and then there's going to be A inverse. Well, this may happen, but in, in this case, we should just forget about this and start over. So in other words, we want to, uh, to take a label that appears together with uh, its inverse with the smallest possible distance between them. Right? So then if in between them we have some other, say, C and C inverse that appear between them, something like C and C inverse, then again we just forget about this B and, and B inverse, and then we just consider C and, and C inverse and whatever is in between them, and so on, right? So then we're going to, to take um, a label. Now let's say I'm going to call it A, such that the, the distance between A and A inverse is the smallest possible, right? So, which, which means that if we, if I had B and B inverse between A and A inverse, then the, the distance between A and A inverse would not be smallest possible. So, it would be B and B inverse, right? So, which means that if I have B and B inverse, then it's going to be something like A and B, then A and B inverse. This is possible. Definitely, this is possible, and um, but then we can rearrange it by applying cutting and pasting operations, so that A, B, A inverse, B inverse, they appear next to each other. So this is very similar to, to step four. So the operations are very similar, they're just longer, and if you are interested, you can read my lecture notes, but I, I don't think it's, it's very exciting. So it's just the, the same way to do it, like in, um, 
in, in step four, only uh, in order to just, just do it once, you have to do it three times. So you have to first kind of cut and paste so that A sits, becomes next to B, then B next to A inverse, and then A inverse next, next to B inverse. But then after three operations, you, this is really possible. All right? So, and, and by doing the, these operations, you make sure that um, A, B, A inverse, B inverse, they sit next to each other. And if you carefully analyze those, those operations, you will see that whatever is in between, you do not destroy the order. I mean, the, the, these operations, they only affect the order of, of the, this A, B, A inverse, and B inverse, but they do not affect the order of whatever is in, in between. So in other words, if, say, we had something like C and C in between, then in the end result is, is still going to be C next to C. If somewhere here we had, like, uh, I don't know, so imagine that somewhere here we, we have C and C. So then C and C are still going to appear together. If somewhere here we, we have something like C, I don't know, maybe D, E, D inverse, E inverse, that they're still going to be appear, appear together as D, E, D inverse, E inverse, and so on. Right? So in other words, when we apply the, these operations, we can do it one by one. So every time we regroup just one particular set of A, B, A, A inverse, B inverse, and then the end result of step five is, is going to be is that um, all combinations of A, B, A inverse, and B inverse are that they, they appear together. So we after step five, we're going to have something like A1, B1, A1 inverse, B1 inverse. Then we may have uh, a few copies of this. So we may have something like C1, C1, C2, C2. Then we may have another uh, sequence like this, like A2, B2, A2 inverse, B2 inverse. Then we, we, we may have maybe some, something like C3, uh, C3, and so on. So the, the end result of step five is going to be a mixture of what we got in step four. So labels that appear together, pairs of labels that appear together. And um, if some label appears together with its inverse, then it's always going to be the first followed by the second, followed by the first inverse, followed by the second inverse. Right, so that's the end result of step five. Now I, I'm going to very quickly go through step six because it's not going to take a lot of uh, space. So step six. So notice that um, after step five, we may have a mixture of uh, the, this uh, of blocks like this when we have two letters that. Uh, uh, alternate with their inverses and the block like this, and then it's just two, two letters. So in step six, we show that uh, the the surface that is given by this a b a inverse b inverse c c is homeomorphic to a a b b c c, and this this step is again is a tutorial exercise. That's basically it, because uh, what step six tells us is that if after step five we have a mixture of um, to just uh, uh, CC and something like AB, A inverse, B inverse, if there is a mixture, then in the end it all can be converted to, to just products of two, uh, two labels squares of, of labels. If this is not present, then it cannot be um, simplified any further. So then the end product is going to be just, the, the end result is going to be just the, the, the product of um, several copies of A, B, A inverse, B inverse. And that, that's it. So because th this is what uh, classification theorem tells us, that uh, every plane model is homeomorphic to one of the following. So it can be a sphere. So the, the sphere is what we obtained uh, after s step two. And so after step two, 
if it was a sphere, or maybe a step, I think it's after step, step two. So if it was a sphere, then it was identified at uh, step two. If, it, if it's not a sphere, then we can continue. And then in the end, so it, it's going to be either the, the sphere with G handles or the sphere with K cross caps. Now, notice that, and it is important that at this moment, when we just prove the, this theorem uh, by doing these um, operations of cutting and pasting, we cannot really prove that uh, different items on the, this list are not homeomorphic to each other. So how do we know that the sphere is not homeomorphic to the sphere with 15 handles? Or how do we know that the sphere with 10 handles is not homeomorphic to the sphere with 20 cross caps? So strictly speaking, it, it could be true. So in, um, a bit later, we will prove that they are actually all different. So that this is not only that uh, this is all that there is, but uh, the, these um, surfaces are actually not homeomorphic to each other.